morning, everyone. Happy Aloha Friday. My goodness, Ryan, here we are, end of the week. Thank you for joining us on the COVID-19 Care Conversation. Good morning, I'm Yanji Denise. And I'm Ryan Kalei We've made it through the end of another week. Uh, this is entering week two for us here on the Honolulu Star Advertiser Facebook page. We wanna thank all of you for tuning in once again today. Uh, you can catch us here. Uh, every day, actually, next week, we will be moving to 10.30. So we normally, again, will start this show at 10. But starting next week and moving forward, we'll be coming on at 10.30. So make uh, those adjustments in your schedule so you can be here with us. And also let your friends and family know about uh, what we're doing here. Make sure you share this page and like it and get the word out. Again, this is a way for us to connect with all of you and provide you with resources during this uh, very uncertain time. Yeah, this is brought to you by the Hawaii Executive Collaborative. That is a collection of business and civic leaders working to make Hawaii a better place, partnering with the Star Advertiser, which has been working tirelessly, those reporters really working around the clock to bring you the latest updates about what is happening here in Hawaii. We are so lucky this morning. We have Dr. Sarah Sarkis joining us in a few minutes. She's going to be talking to us about how we keep ourselves grounded mentally. There is so much stress coming at us, uh, physical fears, financial fears, just, you know, all being together in one house if you have kids or maybe also if you're alone. You know, there's a, a lot of different challenges no matter how you are uh, facing this crisis. And so we've brought her on here to give us some things to think about and some tools as we head into what is going to be a pretty long month. But we always start with the count. And so, Ryan, let's get to those numbers. That's right. Uh, we were up, the state of Hawaii was up 27 new cases for a new total of 285 positive cases here in the state of Hawaii. Some significant statistics, Molokai seeing their first COVID-19 uh, positive test that happened there, a, a resident on the island of Molokai. We're still waiting to get more information about that person as well. And we also uh, know that we have the second fatality, the second death as a result of coronavirus here in the state of Hawaii, bringing that total to two. So we're seeing the numbers continue to grow as state officials have warned uh, people that these numbers for the next, the rest of this week, as well as into next week could be higher uh, and uh, that they expect that, but really it's about what happens after that. But again, uh, most significantly, the second death related to COVID-19 also uh, yesterday, Honolulu Mayor Kirk Caldwell making a pretty, uh, a pretty substantial announcement. Yeah, that's right. He wants everyone to start wearing masks when you head outside. He doesn't want you to use those N95 masks. Those should be reserved for first responders, for doctors, for nurses, for the people in the medical field. But he is encouraging you to wear a homemade mask or purchase a mask, any kind of fabric uh, cloth mask, if you have to, even a bandana just to cover your mouth. And that is really because if you are asymptomatic, you can still pass on the virus. And so he wants us to obviously uh, slow down the spread of this disease. And one way to do that is to wear a mask. Uh, the mayor of Los Angeles made a similar call to action. And so now we see Honolulu following suit. We want to know from you also, do you plan to wear a mask when you step outside your door? Leave a comment. Let us know what you think of the mayor's mask order. Yeah, and it is something that we could actually see nationwide. Uh, there is talks that the president, of course, has encouraged people to use a mask, use a scarf even, as he said. Uh, but there is no official word that has come down from the CDC uh, or, uh, you know, from, from a national mandate that says anytime you go out to wear a mask. So we'll see how uh, the, uh, the nation and how the states will follow suit with this. But again, Honolulu Mayor Krakobo asking for residents to do that. Again, Dr. Sarah Sarkis is going to be joining us in just a few moments. We want to ask you to continue to send in your questions for her uh, and uh, any questions that you may have, uh, because we know that this is a very difficult time for many people and we actually want to bring her in now to kind of talk to us a little bit about some of the things and tips that she may have for people going through this difficult time. Good morning. How are you, Sarah? Hi, thanks for having me. We're so happy to have you. Uh, Dr. Sarkis is a psychologist based here in Honolulu. Um, she has a fantastic blog. You can read more, drsarahsarkis.com. Um, and we want to hear from you. So let us know uh, what you want to ask the doctor. Let's just start off with what everyone is combating. This is an incredible amount of stress to be taking in all at once. Tell us your thoughts on that. Yeah, it is. And that's um, the perfect way to describe it. It's a stress. And we can have we can have low grade stress and intense stress and situations like this have both, right? Readjusting like a home is sort of a lower grade for home learning or both 
people working from home is a less stress than say the financial uncertainties. And so um, that is the primary thing that people are wanting to manage. How do I manage once everything that's familiar to me has changed? And thankfully, stress is an area, anxiety in general is an area that psychology does have a lot of tried and true techniques that work, that really are very, very, very effective. All the way from um, cognitive behavioral techniques to mindfulness techniques, <clears throat> to shifts in your lifestyle that you can make where you'll get a real return on investment quite quickly depending on how severe the anxiety is. And I think, you know, for a lot of us, the anxiety is pretty high. It goes in waves. We have the fear of getting physically ill. Uh, like you mentioned, the financial stresses and then the stress of just being home. Um, what are some practical ways that we can, do, some practical things we can do to tamp down that stress? So when your body is feeling stress, it's really being flooded with these neurochemicals. The reason you're feeling that stress is because you have all these neurochemicals inside of you. And fear is very effective at sort of getting our attention. And we need our attention to be sharp, right? So I'm always, I'm, I'm um, less inclined to say you don't want to feel that. But we want to help give you tools to feel it effectively where your decision making can be crisp and clear and you can think through because we're all going to have to make increasingly more decisions as time goes on in different domains in our life. So the first thing I always tell people is, um, first is chunk time. Don't think about next week. Right now, I wouldn't even say next week. In regular times, which we will return, like there is a reality beyond this um, and we'll be shaped by it, but there is a reality beyond this. And um, I would usually say like, don't think past a month. But I want, I, I am urging and I am practicing sort of closing that window even more. It acts as a source of containment for us. So really what I'm suggesting to people, when you are feeling overwhelmed, especially like as a busy adults with complex lives, I suggest that you take a few minutes every evening and write down in a, a very detailed list of the things that actually have to get done within the next 24 hours and then as much as you can, don't really think much past that. Just do one thing at a time. And usually after about two days, you're gonna see those neurochemicals that I was talking about, be able to sort of drop down a little bit and you'll get some physical relief from uh, the anxiety. The other thing that I would urge everybody to do, myself included, is guard your sleep right now. Um, really try to create a schedule where you are getting an eight hour window, if possible, to try to sleep. It's not realistic to think that your sleep will be undisturbed. And if you're one of those lucky people, I'm super jealous. Um, most of us are gonna have some sleep fluctuations, but sleep is really, really critical. We have a part of our brain called the lymphatic system that cleans out during the evening while we sleep. And it plays an important role in our emotional regulation process. It's why kids get so dysregulated when they don't have enough sleep. So guard your sleep. And we could have a whole topic on ways to do that um, if it feels relevant or if the questions want. I can go through sort of my sleep hygiene suggestions um, but I don't want to derail it on sleep. It's a topic unto itself. Yeah, if I can actually have you step a little bit off to the sides so where we're getting, no, you can stay close. Just for trying to get you more, there you go. Now you're okay. perfect. Um, um, a question I'm, I also sorry, wanted to ask, uh, one of the things that we're obviously being asked to do is social distancing. Uh, yes. Something that is very uncommon for people. And the, the reason why I think that we're seeing a lot of people out on the streets not listening to the social distancing order is because they want that human interaction. They want that feeling of being connected with people. How do we manage this urge to be connected with one another while, you know, while listening to what officials are saying about social distancing? Yeah, I mean, that's a hard one, right? Because we're trying to control 
a population and everybody's going to have different reactions to this boundary. The, the way that I've been able to phrase it, at least to my 11 year old and inside myself is that as much as you can, although I am proud of the um, mayor and the governor of saying that getting outside is important, but with those social distancing uh, guidelines and, to, and obviously if you're sick, don't and wear a mask now. I think these are great suggestions, but being outside certainly is helpful for mental health. In fact, sunrise light and sunset light is actually very critical um, to our mood and specifically anxiety and depression. But I would say that the way that I've phrased it to help my son sort of metabolize and tolerate that we are having to sacrifice a lot of what we have come to feel is sort of our rights and typical part of living here in this amazing state um, is that it's an act of service, that we this is our service to our fellow citizens, that you know we take care of everybody. And part of that means that for those of us that are just lucky that we haven't been exposed to it yet, because uh, that's all it is, it's not like specialness, it's just luck and, um, and good decisions. And the more that we can do that, we're really providing a service to the community. And for me, who has a real practical side of my brain, the more we do that right now, the quicker this will end. I'm not saying it's going to end quickly, but it is definitely going to end quicker if we all comply and as best we can and within making, you know, if you have a mask on and there's nobody outside and you want to go get some fresh air, then, you know, I, I carry on. Um, but the more we comply, it is an act of service. It's a gesture of love to our community. And I like that. I yeah, like that very much. Um, can I want to put up Shauna's comment here, which is how do I help my, my children's anxiety and fears when I can't even manage mine? I think that's a great question. It's so great. And I want to say that I totally as a mother, like separate from being a shrink, I totally um, understand and empathize with what you're saying. Um, a couple of things. The first is you got to put the life mask on yourself, right? So Really, it's not selfish to dial into your own experience and really work on some tried and true self-regulation tools. And we can provide show notes to a bunch of resources that have really kind of world-renowned practices, whether it's breath work or mindfulness or other self-regulatory practices that don't even involve working with a therapist. Um, and then know that our feelings, our children are very attuned, almost um, it's, a, it's a perceptual awareness and a, and a tactile awareness is how attachment develops. So they're very attuned to us. So first off, I notice when I am better regulated, so too is my son. Um, so let's give time for you to focus on yourself and have a daily practice of that. After that, it's also really helpful to teach your kids some of these tools. So um, I do a mindfulness thing with my son when he's sort of worked up. I've also started to do like a very sort of simple yoga practice out on the lanai in the evening with him. I let him pick the music and we just sort of do some breath work and some movement. So I think there's a lot of ways to use this time um, that some really beautiful family practices may develop from it. I like that too. Melody is saying, uh, time starts going faster, but we do need relief. It's difficult to sleep. Just, I know we could do a whole hour on sleep, but it, yeah. in a, in, you know, as, as, as quickly as we can, so we can get to as many questions. Yeah. Uh, what do you suggest when, you know, I know in myself, when I lay down, it's very difficult not to dive into Twitter yes, and then exactly. go and go and go. And suddenly it's two in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you and I will be talking about your two in the mornings <laughs> off air. Um, that's that's no bueno. But what what I would say is this, short and sweet. First of all, on my blog, there is a whole thing on sleep, and I go through an entire like sort of practice of it. But my 10-second pitch would be this. Um, start guarding your sleep this morning for tonight and tonight for tomorrow night. It's a cumulative thing. So cut back on caffeine 
Um, drink a lot of water, try to move your body, try to slow your mind down, um, and no tech for a minimum of two hours prior to bed. Do a puzzle, read a book. These are novel ideas, two things I'm doing in abundance right now. Um, hang out, play board games, do a crossword puzzle, do whatever, and watch your body sort of begin to regulate itself. Um, and then, of course, phone is on airplane mode, or if you're nervous and you want your phone on the moon mode of the iPhone, at least, um, so that people, if they call you twice, they can get through. But at least everything else is um, not buzzing and beeping and blah, 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 blah. And I would try that. I would also limit your water intake roughly two hours before bed, too, because sometimes you can fall asleep, but then if you wake up, you can't get back to sleep. So try to you know, have most of your liquids in the early part of the day. That's a great practical tip that <laughs> everybody can use, even beyond. <laughs> oh, and the, the one other thing I would say about sleep is it's deeply tied to, um, to light, literally to how light is absorbed through the optic nerve. So really start a practice. This is cheap and it's renewable. Every morning, get up for 10 minutes in, a, in any direction, get outside roughly when the sun is rising and just let your body absorb it. And if you can do the same at sunset, you can even just stand you know, on a lanai or in a driveway. Um, and there's a bunch of research coming out of Stanford on how, and it's scientist Andrew Huberman, and on how this really does uh, impact our sleep. And it's a really cheap hack. I mean, it's deep mm -hmm. science, but it's a hack to, to um, try to get back into a rhythm. One of the things that I think uh, many are suggesting uh, is trying to develop a sense of normalcy and a routine. What would you say about that? Because I, I find myself not even knowing what day of the week it is because oh. you know, going through this uh, I know. Groundhog's Day going on here. Yeah. What would you sort of recommend in sort of developing a routine and, and how important is that? A routine is really important. Anybody who's had a kid um, has come front and center with what it means to be unroutined. And uh, it's not a good look. Um, containment is like an adult swaddle. It really is. And so every chance that you can to get a sense of routine is what it does is it relieves your own brain of something that we call cognitive load. And so the less the brain has to think about like, wait, where am I working today? Where is my kid going? Where is that thing? You actually have more resources available to you for other forms of thinking and processing the world, right? We have sort of a finite amount of um, resources available to us. And so the more that you can get a new structure going, bedtimes, dinner time, anchor your day in sort of a, 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 um, a structure that is not rigid, but is, um, you know, sturdy enough to contain everybody, then you're going to feel better. The list that I suggested is tied to that, is that the more that you can be, that you can help your brain organize what it needs to do, because everything, we have no more, like you were mentioning, you have no more sort of regular markers like, oh, well, today's Wednesday and I'm going to the office and I do this on Wednesdays or Friday in this case. Um, so those are all efforts. And if you do this consistently, you will notice the dial on anxiety begin to inch backwards. Yeah, I think what you were saying earlier about just focusing on the next day or two uh, is really critical because it's so hard for us to, or at least for me, not think, okay, well, this is going to be like this and when is it going to be over and, and then what happens and, you know, 25% yeah. of the state is going to be out of work and then what's going to happen and that, you know, and so you go, you yes. project so far into the future. Uh, it's really hard not to do that. It's so hard not to do that. It's a practice of self-discipline. It's also a practice of self-awareness. We all have different triggers that sort of take us to this global and often catastrophic thinking. And certainly a global pandemic will trigger that floodgate for a lot of us. Um, it's not unusual. 
And although it doesn't usually in times like this because of the issue of cognitive load, we don't have a lot of res we don't have a lot of, we don't have a deep bench right now, right? It's like you're playing a full game with no bench and it's a big game. And so thinking big is just too much of a tax on us. Mm -hmm. So the more you can chunk it, it's this principle of chunking, the more you can sort of chunk it into manageable stretches of time, you're just trying, anxiety is sort of a game of inches. It's like you're just trying to get a few inches back because the reality is your body's gonna feel a lot of fear. Fear is adrenaline, norepinephrine, and dopamine in your body. It's essentially a, a neurochemical cocktail that makes us feel really speedy and really sort of alert. Um, and the more that we can take some of the edge off of that, the better sense of self-regulation you're gonna experience. And you're not gonna be able to take off the edge around the pandemic, it is happening. Mm -hmm. But you can take it off day to day by just taking it one sort of critical chunk of time at a time. Okay, that's great advice. Thank you so much, Dr. Sarah Sarkis. You can read more. Uh, she's got resources on her blog, drsarahsarkis.com. And we will definitely have you on in the weeks ahead because we all need uh, that push to sleep and to self-regulate. I feel better already. <laughs> oh, I'm glad. Yeah, and everybody, you know, take care of yourselves. And there's lots of resources in the community if mental health stuff is something you're significantly struggling with. And we can put all that in the show notes as well. There's a really robust community here, so people take good care. Thank, well, thank you. you so much. Thanks for having me. Have a great weekend. So important to remember to do that, Ryan. And, you know, I mean, I, f I find myself falling down the news rabbit hole in the middle of the night, and yeah. it's, it's tough. Um, it and we know a lot of you do too, because that's why you're here. You're getting news and information, but this is a different kind of space. Uh, this is really for us to share. We want to bring experts on like Dr. Sarkis and uh, other notables in the community to talk about what's happening. Uh, this is really a community forum. So let us know who you'd like to hear from. We've got some great guests coming up next week. Um, but before we get to that, let's talk about a few other headlines. Uh, the second person on Kauai arrested for violating the 14 day quarantine. 50 year old Devin Martin of Olympia, Washington. He arrived here, he had no reservations, no lodging. And so he was arrested, um, first tested for COVID-19. He's not showing any symptoms. Um, actually, I'm not, I should take that back. I'm not sure that he was, he was tested. I know that he, they screened him for any symptoms and he did not have any. Uh, he's supposed to be flying back today. So folks on Kauai taking that order very seriously. What do you guys think of the arrest? We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, and actually we're getting word of a second arrest that was also made. And uh, so Kauai really taking this seriously. They were actually also giving out tickets uh, on the beaches where people were lounging on the beaches and people were asking, what about the warnings? But Kauai police saying, you've been warned enough. Uh, so Kauai really putting their foot down with some of those mandates. And we are also an interesting article. I encourage you to check out the Honolulu Star Advertiser today. Grab a paper or check it out online about uh, the number of homeless people that are actually flying here into the uh, state because of the cheap tip tickets. Uh, they want to be here for this all. And uh, because they do not have a place to stay, uh, they are trying to find ways to get them back to where they came from. So uh, an interesting article, uh, but good to also see that the state and county officials are following up on this 14 day quarantine to really ensure that they find ways to enforce it. Yeah, taking it very seriously. And to that end, Mayor Kirk Caldwell has put out a call to the public to be uh, to help them be the eyes and ears and to help enforce for businesses that are not operating, uh, that are operating outside of the stay at home, work from home order. They want those folks to call 768 City. That's the city's hotline. Hotline. You can also go to oneoahu.org. And we've got that number uh, in the show description right above, but 768 City. So interesting because they're getting more and more calls about businesses that are open that are that should not be. And um, if they do get enough reports, then they do send HPD out to those businesses. So they can't be everywhere at once. And so they're wanting people to be their eyes and ears. Yeah, and you know they, they recognize that this is a trying time as well for them uh, because of the amount of calls and things that they're having to deal with. So asking the community for that help. Uh, we're also knowing that the city is gonna continue on with their weekend testing
providing access for people who qualify to get that COVID-19 test done. Uh, they will be once again back out in Waipahu as well as in Kaka'ako this weekend. Again, they encourage you to make sure that you qualify for that. Uh, we heard last week, again, almost a thousand people showing up on, uh, on Saturday, but actually only close to 250 getting screened. So they want to make sure that you are prepared for that, that you understand that there are qualifications that you need to meet in order to even get a testing done. So in order to uh, get it done, you want to make sure that you qualify for that. Yeah, and we've got numbers there. Uh, Premier Medical Group Hawaii is part of the group that's running those tests. So if you want to call ahead of time and make sure that you'd actually qualify and that you should go down, those numbers are right there on your screen. Local numbers 304-8816 or 367-6020. Um, make sure you give them a call before you get down there, waste the gas, get in line, and potentially expose yourself. I mean, that's the other part of it. You are staying in your car, so this is supposed to be a safe way to test but you're heading down there with a bunch of other people who suspect that they might have the virus. You don't want to unnecessarily expose yourself if, in fact, you do not. Um, we want to get to some good news. The Hawaii hero of the day, amazing doctors, nurses, first responders who are caring for all of us. We heard from Shane Enright yesterday. Mahalo to EMS. Um, the nonprofit group Everyone has launched their third COVID-19 uh, public service announcement. It's a plea from Hawaii's medical... This is our first time trying to play you guys video through this platform, so excuse any technical difficulties. We hope you saw that. And if you didn't, go to everyonehawaii.com. That's every, the number one, N-E, hawaii.com. They received over 100 selfie submissions with the message, stay home for me. Those are all of our frontline medical workers who are doing so much for us so that that little girl can go home and uh, you when her daddy comes home, she, she can give him a big hug. That was a very touching, touching video. Um, so go take a look at that and remember to please stay home for the, all of those folks. And again, we want to encourage people. Another way that you can help is kind of actually helping to take a survey. Survey The Hawaii uh, Fights COVID.org is up right now. And we want to encourage people to take some time out. It doesn't take too long. It takes less than five minutes. Uh, and really, it's a way to kind of do a tracing to track where COVID-19 is here in the state. And uh, it's very easy, as I said, it's confidential. And it's using this tracing method uh, to track the spread in our community. Uh, it really relies on self-reporting. They'll ask you questions about where you've been, who you've been in contact with, uh, and if you've been isolated or not. And it's a great way for us to kind of help put some numbers behind this and some statistics behind where everybody has been in order to kind of help, because we're not gonna obviously be able to provide tests for everyone. So. This is a great resource for the state as well as for researchers who are trying to get a handle on where this is and how widespread it is. So I encourage you to head on over HawaiiFightsCOVID.org. Yeah, next week right here, we're going to start again, as Ryan said, at 1030. We have an all-star lineup next week. Senator Brian Schatz is going to be joining us, Mayor Kirk Caldwell. We've invited Scott Kawakami back, or Murakami back, um, to join us. Uh, and also, we're going to be starting off the week on Monday, 1030, right here with Dr. Rupi, so you can ask your questions to her. She's an acute care medical doctor, uh, an internist, and she can take all your COVID questions and also give us some tips about how to grocery shop safely and how to properly wear the mask and all that. So we're really looking forward, again, Dr. Rupi, uh, Scott Murakami from the Unemployment Office, Mayor Kirk Caldwell, and Senator Brian Schatz. It's going to be a great week. Yeah, that's right. So again, we want to encourage you to let people know we want to hear from you. Uh, part of the reason why we're having some of these guests on is because we know of the demand and the questions that many of you have, especially about unemployment, some of the medical questions that have been coming in. So we want to encourage you to go ahead and list your comments here. Uh, we can ask, especially for Dr. Rupi on Monday, She's actually going to be addressing some of the questions over the weekend uh, because we had so many that have been coming in. You can also head on over to coronavirushawaii.com where you can actually type in the messages directly for Dr. Rupi. We have a section there, ask the doctors. Uh, we'll send that over to her and she can get you those answers right away. So you can head on over there. A uh, great resource and a way to connect with her and a way to kind of ask questions for her to be here on Monday. So 
hope everybody has a safe weekend. We've made it through another week and uh, just want to continue to encourage everyone to stay home. And uh, if we can all do our part, we can all help to get through this together. So yeah. on behalf of Yonji and I, we'll have a great weekend. We'll see you at 10, uh, 1030 on Monday. Aloha. Aloha.